Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. Today we begin our long awaited reviews of the Denon DJ Prime series. Now, this, if you haven't been paying attention, is quite a big deal, and that is because with the SC5000 player in particular, this is the first time that any big company has really gone after Pioneer DJ in the high end media player space. So these things have got a big challenge on their hand, trying to kind of overcome that monopoly in high-end booths around the world of the Nexus players, the Nexus 2s, and the original 2000s before that, which really are the default option for most high-end venues. So, big challenge on Denon's hands, but they've really gone for it, let's put it like that. Now, we are gonna start today with the X1800 mixer. This is perhaps the less exciting part of the whole setup. You know, the players are the big headline act, of course, but still, the mixer is a very important part. If you're gonna have a system like this, you need that kind of connectivity, the Ethernet hookup and so on, everything to work seamlessly so that clubs and venues can buy a complete package and not mix and match from different manufacturers. So it is a very important part, and I'm doing this one first because it will be a shorter review. The players, I'm gonna do the software with them, the Engine Prime, and that's gonna be a long old video, so we're gonna do the mixer first. There's still plenty of cool, interesting stuff to talk about with this, Let's get down to it. The X1800 is a four channel club mixer with a street price of around about $1,900. It's based on all digital architecture, which Denon have certainly taken full advantage of. More on that later. Build quality is top notch. The mixer is quite a heavyweight at nearly 16 pounds and everything feels as solid and reliable as you would hope for at the price. There are metal pots everywhere too, which I always like to see. Sound quality is excellent, both in the lab and out on big club systems. There's no particular signature to the sound, it's just got that nice, clean audio that I expect to hear on a digital mixer of this caliber. The phono preamps are also great. As the VL12 turntable is another big part of the Prime system, I was pleased to find that real vinyl sounds great through the X1800, as well as digital sources. The default settings for the EQ have a user-friendly sound, but you can go in and customize the cutoff points if those aren't to your taste, and choose between EQ and isolator modes. The faders are cool, with Denon DJ's Flex Fader Cross Fader and stiffer feeling up faders. Those have a proper continuous curve adjustment, so you can cut with them, as does the cross fader, although that has a lot of extra adjustment available too. You can dial in the cutting distance precisely using the mixer's utility menu and even adjust the tension by taking off the top plate and turning a screw underneath. The minimum cutting distance is absolutely acceptable for scratching, no doubt, although I'd personally like the opportunity to go super tight and it sounds like Denon DJ will be tweaking that in a future firmware release. Visually, everything is laid out in a logical fashion and will feel intuitive to experienced club DJs, whilst the mixer still manages to avoid seeming like a DJM clone. My one complaint with the aesthetics is that the black on black color scheme is never good for visibility in a dark room. And while some parts of the X1800 really pop, others just disappear entirely. Connections are comprehensive. On each of the four main channels, you have a choice of a digital input, line, phono, and USB, which can be assigned to either of the two USB ports and DVS. I couldn't test out the DVS functionality yet as the announced Serato DJ support isn't ready at this point, but using other software, the audio interfaces work great and have the same high quality sound as the rest of the mixer. There is a digital link input as well as the digital output. Master is on XLRs and RCA jacks. There's a dedicated record output on RCAs and a booth output with balanced jacks. The mixer can be set to mono if you're having stereo image issues on a big rig, which I always like to see. Everything is covered here. You have a stereo send and return loop with jack sockets on the mixer, accessible through the BPM effects section. I had a bit of a hard time getting it to work exactly as desired with some hardware like the Pioneer RMX 1000, but it works well with pedals and that kind of thing. I don't always remember to mention MIDI in these reviews, but on the X1800 you have MIDI clock output and surface mapping available over both USB and traditional 5-pin MIDI connector, which is a nice touch. Underneath the MIDI port is a jack socket for mic number two, with mic one having a combo jack and XLR socket on the top panel. These have shared two-band EQ and dedicated controls for level with clip lights on each one, and the talk over level can be adjusted in the settings. Queuing can be set to solo mode if you prefer, and it has Q Master blend, split queue, and both sizes of headphone jack. All good there. 
So we get to the link ports, and now there are five altogether, four for the SC5000 players and one for a PC, which doesn't do anything yet. Each player has only one link output, despite having two virtual decks on board, so when using two players, you only need two link cables connected. The system will auto-detect which players are plugged in where, so there's no manual setup to do. The built-in Ethernet hub was one of the reasons I always preferred the DJM2000 over the Pioneer 900 Nexus, so I'm glad to see that technology in place on the X1800. As you might expect, the link enables the mixer to automatically detect the BPM for effects over the link for each deck, but it also brings another cool feature, which is the colour coding of the Q buttons to each deck layer. When running four layers on two decks, anything which helps you keep things clear in your mind is welcome, and that's a surprisingly big help. Moving on to the effects, they're generally very well implemented. Starting with the BPM effects, you have the typical club effects like delay, echo, reverb, flanger and beat rolls. I'd like the option to quantize the rolls to the grid of the players, and I hope Denon DJ will add that feature soon. They're still usable, but your timing has to be pretty good at the moment. I'm delighted that the effects are post crossfader, even when assigned to an individual channel, which was always a frustration with the competition. In terms of BPM detection, you have the Engine Prime automatic detection, there's also audio detection, which works very well, and you can dial in a BPM manually if you want to. The frequency knob allows you to control which parts of the signal are being affected, which I always love, letting me do high pass delays and that kind of thing. The big touch strip for instant effects is responsive and works nicely. It's not a feature I use loads, but it does work really well. The only effect I wasn't overly keen on was the reverb. I never quite found a setting that I really liked for those big build-ups, but that is offset by the fantastic beat break effect. This is kind of like an automated version of a slicer, and it offers a unique way to chop your tracks up in a very simple manner. The more I played with it, the more I loved it, and you can even set your own custom patterns for it. Killer stuff. So we move over to the center of the mixer, where each channel has two knobs, one for the combo filter and one for the sweep effects. This is fantastic, letting you work both things at the same time. The filter sounds good, and it has adjustable resonance control, letting you set it to your own taste. The sweep effects has some of the usual suspects like post fader dub echo, pink slash white noise, and a gate, but for me the revelation was the wash out effect. Kind of like a combined roll out and echo out effect, it works fantastically in place of a traditional echo out, and I found myself using it all the time on the X1800. The final thing to mention is the screens and the utility settings within. The screens are high resolution, clear and bright even during the day, and the amount of settings buried beneath the hood is really impressive. I've mentioned plenty of them already in this review, but as a good representation of how far you can go beyond your typical utilities, the BPM FX on off button is an RGB button, so Denon DJ let you choose what color you want to have it. Why not? As I say, Denon DJ are really taking advantage of the digital nature of this product, and that's pretty exciting. You can truly make the X1800 work however you want it to. So there you go, my take on the X1800 Prime from Denon DJ. You know, I almost kind of feel sorry for this mixer in a way, because it's inevitable that it's gonna get overshadowed by the players, the SC5000 players, are uh, such a new and exciting proposition that this poor old mixer sat in the middle, it's gonna be overshadowed by that, of course it is. But that's not to underestimate the importance of this mixer as part of the Prime system. It's got to be there, they had to nail this, otherwise there would be a problem. And thankfully, they have nailed it. You know, there's nothing really, apart from the few minor things I've pointed out, there's nothing serious to say that I dislike about it. Everything works really well. The build quality is completely on point. It feels like it's gonna be very durable in a club install environment. It's heavy, you know, solid, well put together. The sound quality, excellent. You know, It's getting a bit boring almost because the amount of digital mixers that I hear now that just have this nice, clean digital sound, it's rare that I hear a mixer that is less than satisfying in that regard these days, but that's a good thing ultimately. And this one, yep, yeah, sounds great on a big function one or whatever, sounded fantastic, so no complaints there. I love the amount of control you have over the sound, the effects, the way you can tweak everything is really nice from a performance point of view. I like the separate filter and sweep effects, that's great. And there are some effects here that you don't see on hardware really anywhere else. Again, very good. 
connectivity is all there. You know, you've got your balanced outs, you've got your two mics, four photo inputs, four lines, two USB ports, and your digital hookups as well. So all of this is covered. The fader's good. The effects, as I say, really, really nice. So there's nothing at all to complain about with this. It's just a shame that it is overshadowed by these players, but it is an incredibly important part of that system and it works really well with the players in terms of you know the Q system lighting up, the BPM link and everything else. All of that, again, is on point. And price-wise, it is cheaper than a 900 Nexus 2. So that is where Denon DJ are coming from. They're coming in with equivalent sort of quality, a little bit cheaper which may sway some people, it might not. But of course, the important thing to look at there is the system as a whole. So next week, we'll be diving deep into the players and the Engine Prime software that goes with them. And there's gonna be a lot to talk about. It's gonna be a long video. So I'll see you in that one. Thank you for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.